Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, Force here, and today we will be taking a look at the Rogue card set. Now the Rogue card set has got some very interesting synergy with the combo system that allows you to utilize the fact that you've played cards already in a turn to get much more effective spells. There's also quite a bit of direct damage and some very interesting tech abilities, so let's go ahead and jump right in as we take a look at the Rogue card set. Alright, so first thing is first, we're going to start off by taking a look at the Rogue Hero Power, which is the the ability to create your own dagger and then pump up any weapons that you may have. So for the cost of two resources, you can get yourself a 1-2 dagger, or if you already have a weapon, you can just give it plus one attack for the turn. Now, this has come to actually be probably one of my favorites. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting because as I was playing through the ladder, I primarily was playing a paladin. That's how I got myself up to masters. But I was continuously seeing rogues, and the things the thing about rogues is that they always seem to have the most interesting decks, and I think it came down to the fact that the combo system can be really, really crazy, and, and it can make it so they can pull off some absolutely ridiculous turns. Uh, so let's start off by talking about that, the combo system. So the way combos work is that if you have already played a card for the turn, the combo effect is triggered. So for example, here in Cold Blood, you can either do two damage, or if you've already played a card that turn, you can do four damage instead. So for example, that works with even any of these zero casting cost abilities. So let's say you throw down a preparation that cost a nothing, you can then cold blood, trigger the combo, and anything else that you play that turn will also be triggered off of that combo. So you, any, any combo spells that you have, you can keep playing after you've already played one card, combos will trigger for the rest of your turn. So these combos are in all sorts of things. It's not only direct damage. You've got combos on this Defias Ringleader, uh, which gives you a 2-1 bandit that turn. And the, the, the funniest thing about this is, again, the combo works off of any card that you've played. So if you play your, your crystal from the coin, you can play that on turn one, get yourself two resource, and then on turn one, get the Defias Ringleader with the combo triggered because you played the coin first, which counts as a card, even though it costs nothing. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty crazy, that system. Now, in terms of the abilities of the cards, we're basically looking at a ton of direct damage. We've got things like Backstab to direct damage to a minion, the Cold Blood for direct damage to a minion that is comboed. We also have the Shiv that does direct damage plus draw cards, Sinister Strike direct damage to an enemy hero, uh, head, crack, head Crack, it's actually the focus of the deck that I'll be showing you, uh, this plus spell power and some card drawing. It's two damage to an enemy hero. The combo is that you return the card to your hand next turn. <laughs> it's so good. You get the card back into your hand if it's comboed, and all you need to do to trigger this combo, like all the other combos, is have played a card before it. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, some of the other direct damage that we have, Perdition's Blade, it's just a 2-2 weapon, but it's got the uh, damage dealing plus a combo for more damage. Uh, we've got the Fan of Knives, which is like Whirlwind. It costs a lot more, though, and it allows you to draw a card as well. That's one damage to all enemy minions. And unlike Whirlwind, uh, Whirlwind hits your own minions for the warrior. Fan of Knives is just the enemy minions. Uh, the SI Agent, which is a creature that also does two damage when it comes into play, and I think that is it for direct damage. Besides direct damage, there's uh, quite a bit of tech that's available here, and by tech I mean just interesting, unique abilities, like the ability to give all your minions stealth until the end of next turn. Preparation to make your next next spell cost uh, two less for this turn, and preparation cost zero to get into play. Shadow Step to bounce a creature, a friendly minion, back to your hand and make it cost two less. This is really great if you've got creatures uh, that have activated abilities from when they come into play, or if you've got a creature that's taken a lot of damage and you want to reset that damage, you bounce it back to your hand and then it will cost two less when you want to replay it. We've also got some weapon pump ups here in Deadly Poison. We have got uh, some pretty decent creatures, the Patient Assassin. It's got stealth, it's a 1-1, one, one, but all you need to do is damage a enemy minion and it's gonna get destroyed. Uh, here's the Sap, another example of some tech. This is to return an enemy minion to its hand. Blade Fury to destroy your weapon, deal its damage to all enemy minions. Betrayal to have an enemy minion deal its damage to the minions next to it. Uh, we have got, let's take a look here. We're getting pretty close to done taking a look at this. Direct creature removal with assassinate Edwin Van Cleef. It's a three resource for a one one that's got stealth plus a combo of pumping itself up. Uh, Master of Disguise, a battle cry to give a friendly minion stealth. Uh, vanish to return all minions to their owner hands. Kid Napper uh, returns a minion to its owner's hand. And then lastly, we got Sprint to draw four cards. This is a basic card. I, I just haven't finished uh, 
I think I'm only level nine at the Rogue right now. So anyways, that is a look at the Rogue set of cards. Now let's take a look at a deck using some of those cards in action. Valera versus Anduin. The light shall bring victory. Okay, so the rogue deck that I've decided to build is a one focused uh, pretty much entirely on the combo system, uh, utilizing combos and just to try to get some ridiculous turns. And it can actually be quite absurd, some of the stuff that you can do. And uh, hopefully I'll get to show you some of that here in this video. So we do get to play first, which is actually a little bit unfortunate because it is really, really good uh, because of how the combo system works and that, that it triggers off of... Uh, playing the the gem, the coin. Going second is pretty much best when you're playing as the rogue deck. So let's take a look here at what our opponent decides to do this turn. Looks like it's going to be nothing. We get turn two, and wonderfully enough, we did draw, draw into the Geomancer. Uh, so beyond the combo system, spell power, spell power and card draw is also a big part of this uh, deck. You can see the spell power greatly affecting... Uh, the cards that we have in our hands. So we've got lots of cards that are damaged that uh, are affected by spell power. To affect spell power, we've got the Kabul Geomancer. We also have the 4 4 Drake that uh, gives you plus one spell power and allows you to draw a card. Let's see if he can do anything about this turn two. He's going to drop a coin and then for three resource, let's see what, what he has. The future? Okay, that is uh, a really good card. It's a 2 3. It's got Wind Fury. Uh, luckily for us, though, I think we will be able to deal with that this turn. Well, actually. Shucks. Uh, I can I can hit it with this. Uh, it, it's kind of... I would love to do 5 damage to him directly, but... Oh, you know what we can do, actually? Let's do this. We're gonna... Yeah, we're gonna hit him just for 3. And then the with the combo now triggered, we can cold blood our creature, giving it plus 4 attack, and hit him for 6. You can see... Just a simple combo like that turns out to be pretty ridiculous for a six swing on turn three. And the Mana Addict is another card in this uh, deck, which is absolutely insane. I've gotten turn four victories before. I think you might be able to get a turn three victory with it, actually. All right, he's going to play this. It gives his minions taunt plus draws a card. Obviously, the taunt didn't really come into effect there, but the card draw did. And uh-oh. Uh-oh, this turn is gonna hurt him. We're gonna shiv him for two, drawing a card, triggering the combo system, and then we will, now with the combo triggered, we can Cold Blood, giving him plus four plus O, oh, to hit now for 10, and then we can Head Crack to hit for three. And since the Head Crack was comboed, it comes back to our hand next turn. There it is. <laughs> so he is now at nine. If he does not kill the Geomancer, or play a creature with taunt, the game is over. Oh, the combo system, how absurd you can be. Now it's not over yet. He's still got a chance to do stuff this turn. He's gonna play this. It's a 1-3. He's gonna give a taunt. And that actually might be enough unless I draw something. No, I, you know what? Actually, no, it's not. No, it's not, we win. Uh, this might be the most ridiculous game that I have ever showed you guys. Without a doubt. All right, three, uh, two, da two damage all minions, draw a card. Activate our weapon. Hit his 1-1 one, one taunt. And then hit him for 10. Yep, the combo system is kind of ridiculous. Okay, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here by me showing you the deck list that I have uh, for this combo card draw and spell power deck that I've built. Uh, it consists of a mix of the neutral and rogue cards. Pretty much a lot of the creatures are the neutral cards as well as the spell power, and then a lot of the tech and damage dealing comes from the rogue stuff. So we've got backstabs uh, for two damage to minion, cold blood to pump up plus two or plus four attack, depending on combo, shiv for damage and card draw. And remember, all this damage stuff is that much better with spell power creatures in play. Eviscerate for two or four damage, depending on combo. Head crack for two damage that can be returned to your hand. I've got one of the Blood Mage Thalnos. If I had another one, I'd put it in this deck. It's not only is it spell power, but it's also got card draw from the Death Rattle. Uh, Geomancer for spell power. Mana Addict, unreal. You just saw, so you just saw how crazy it was. I won with a Kabul Geomancer. 
Take a look at Mana Addict. Cost two, okay? Whenever you cast a spell, it gets plus two attack for this turn. So for example, when I had pumped him up all those turns with our Cold Blood, a comboed Cold Blood not only gives him the plus four for the Cold Blood, but two more attack from his innate ability. So it's not four attack, it's six attack. And then 12 attack the turn after with the other Cold Blood. I mean, the Mana Addict, if I had a Mana Addict instead of a Geomancer, that would have been pretty crazy. Now, obviously, the Geomancer also gave me spell power. If you have a Mana Addict and a Geomancer, it's kind of GG unless they kill it, which, again, the opponent there wasn't equipped to do so. Novice Engineer for card draw, again, looking for these important cards, just trying to filter through the deck and get them. Uh, Perdition's Blades got the combo of damage, plus it's a nice weapon to have. We have got the Fan of Knives for mass damage, plus card draw. Defender of Argus, uh, getting Taunt is important, at least some form of Taunt, so I've got the Defenders, plus this guy, he's a 1-7. There are, uh, people like the 3-5 Taunt, but the reason I picked this guy as the 1-7 is because it's four lands, seven defense is huge, plus I've got the Cold Bloods. If I want to make him an offensive creature, I can certainly do so. Uh, we've got the Assassinate for direct creature removal, the Azura Drake for spell power and the Battle Cry draw card, and then lastly, the Gadget and Auctioneer. You didn't really get to see that in play last game because we didn't. the game didn't go on long enough, but this is a really good card, as you can imagine. Reading it here, whenever you cast a spell, draw a card. I've got a ton of spells. Provides a ton of card advantage. All right, guys, so once again, this has been a look at the Rogue card set here in Hearthstone, as well as a deck utilizing the combo system that I found to be pretty darn effective. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. Stay tuned for more Hearthstone coverage in the future. Keep watching and keep owning.